In this week's episode, they are determined to stay connected with the rest of the world. But first, he made it to the top because he has nerves of steel. Hello and welcome. Silo Sinyadzi is an inspiring businessman who has recently been featured in the prestigious Forbes magazine. But his success followed long and unfortunate life events. He spent six years in jail for a crime he committed in a moment of rage. Interestingly, it was prison that taught him the skills that led to his success. He was preparing to be part of the legal fraternity. A bright law student who thoroughly enjoyed his studies, Selo Sinyazi had done his family proud. Out of that family, the only one who managed to do metric, that was only me. Silo did well for himself, studying at Turflop University, selling fruit and snacks to pay for his tuition. His family struggled financially. But in his second year, Silo couldn't manage on his own. I went to my father, I said, look, uh, uh, now we need to pay for, I managed to pay for first semester then we are supposed to pay for second semester. It turned out his father had lent the little pension money he'd saved to a family friend. But things became complicated when Silo's dad suddenly died of pneumonia in 1990 before he was repaid. Shortly after the funeral, Silo confronted the man who owed his late father money. He was overcome with rage. I got a shock of my life because he, he, was, so, he was so angry with me. He said, look, I don't owe your father anything. His anger didn't subside. Days later, a fuming Silo went back to the family friend with a firearm to demand his father's money. As tempers fled, Silo fired a warning shot in the air, a decision he would regret dearly. I never practiced a gun in my life. Never done that. In that moment of chaos, bystanders sprang into action and overpowered Silo before taking him to the police. He was sentenced to 12 years in prison for attempted robbery with intent to murder. It was end of the road for me. Here I was studying and, and doing well with my studies. I was doing well with my studies. And here I am in prison. From wanting to be a lawyer, Silo had broken the law and was paying a heavy price for it. It took me two years uh, uh, to accept that really I'm a prisoner. One thing I regret, I think I should have taken it in another direction. Four years into his sentence, Silo was moved from Bavian Sport to Pretoria Central Prison, where he had an opportunity to learn new skills. We cover a lot of things um, from making furniture, to working with steels, and doing trailers, uh, mechanical uh, engineering. He took advantage of these opportunities and studied education and sheet metal work. 
At this stage, he was beginning to see new possibilities for his life. After serving half of his 12-year sentence, Silo impressed prison officials with his good behavior and was granted parole in 1996. Now, starting life on a clean slate, he approached a relative to help him find a job. My elder brother was working as a boiler maker, as a welder. He said, come, you can work at uh, our factory. The following year, he moved to an engineering firm in Johannesburg. While working there, his sister asked him to install new gutters at her house. Having learned the skill in prison, Silo was inspired to create them from scratch using steel. When neighbors saw his unique creations, they requested his services. Gradually, Silo was beginning to build a customer base and eventually started his own business. To develop his business further, I assisted him in getting in machinery from, from America at the time. Um, and we had meetings with the bank to make sure that the finances were organized. From a convict, Selosinyazi has managed to turn things around. In almost two decades, he has built an inspiring enterprise, expanding beyond Gauteng and securing a place in the prestigious Forbes magazine. People probably expected him to continue failing, probably go back to jail because of what he had done. Spending time in jail, coming out and becoming an entrepreneur with no schooling whatsoever in business, and he's made a success of his life. There you have it. As always, we appreciate your feedback. Against all odds at enca.com, you can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Still to come, a poverty-stricken community in the Eastern Cape finally gets connected. <laughs>